In this video, I'm just going to cover some basic principles of subdivision modeling or subpatch modeling. And I'm going to start with a box and just show a few ways to keep the edges fairly sharp, but still give them a nice rounded um, edge to them using some of the basic principles of subdivision modeling. So I'm going to start with a box uh, under the Create and Primitives tab. I'm going to uh, drag out. I'm going to keep it fairly flat. It'll be a little bit easier to see what we're doing. I'm going to hit Return to accept that. Uh, I'm going to hit F2 to center it, and just the A button, which will uh, fill all of our views. I have a tendency to use uh, pretty much all the, the command keys for view rotation, so I'll, I'll hold the Option or Alt key down and left mouse click to rotate. Um, I have a tendency to do that as well as the zoom, which was Option or Alt and the Control key to zoom in and out, rather than use the, the keys up here, but you have to do whatever you feel comfortable with. So the, the first thing that I'm going to do is, if we enter subpatch mode by hitting the tab key, you can see that this object obviously will just become a fairly big blob. It actually kind of looks like an M&M &M at this point, which is not what we want. So what we need to do essentially is to create some new geometry. And I like to call this new geometry control loops. Typically, you want to create a loop all the way around the object. And you want to keep these close to the edges that you want to keep semi-sharp. The nice thing about LightWave is there are a few ways to do this. Um, I'm going to try to show a few different ways. Um, one quick and easy way is to use the knife tool. And if you go into the top view, we're just going to drag down. I'm going to hold the control key to constrain it so it stays nice and sharp. And you can drag all the way through hit the return key to accept that and you can see that we've created a new loop which will help control this geometry while we subdivide this mesh and I'm gonna go through really quickly and do all the edges now the knife tool is pretty good it won't work with many objects that are not very you know if you're working with an object that is not as simple as a cube and um, you wanna put a good loop in, it's probably not the best way. But it is really quick and um, it does work in many times, in many cases. So we have all the edge loops and you can see really quickly that I have an edge loop in the front and the back, the top and bottom, and also on the left and right. Essentially all the sides have have what I like to call a new control loop. So if we were to enter subpatch mode again, sub, you know, subdivide this mesh again, hit the tab key, you could see pretty quickly that we have essentially what we wanted. We have a a cube or a flattened cube with nice rounded edges. Um, the only problem I have with this is if we exit this again, typically, you know, for me anyway, I'd want all these you know, all these edges to be rounded. A very very similar amount. If this was like a object that was milled in a machine or some, or a factory, um, but because of the inexact nature of the way we did this, if you look in the in the back view, you could see that the, the edge loops aren't the same distance from the edges we're trying to control, which means the rounding is going to be slightly different. Now many times this won't matter, and the, the truth is, if we if we look at the subdivided view, you probably can't see much of a difference. But I have a tendency to want to be a little bit more accurate than that, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna delete that, and we're gonna just start again really quickly. I'm gonna create another box, fairly flat cube. I'm gonna accept that. I'm just gonna center it up. Hit the A key to get all of our views. So one of the other techniques that I like to use to create these control loops um, is, <clears throat> excuse me, is to use uh, Bandsaw Pro. So I'm going to go into the polygon mode. I'm going to select two polys, and what this does, if you're not that familiar with Bandsaw Pro, is it will essentially it will start creating new edge loops along this path that I've created. You don't have to select all of the polygons. 
So essentially, I've, I've at this point I've selected all four polygons in this you know loop. Essentially, the, this this ring of of faces. You don't need to select all of them with Bandsaw Pro. You actually only really need to select two to let it know what direction you want to go. Otherwise, sometimes it may not know and it may pick a different direction. It may try to do it around this way. So I'm going to select two faces. I'm going to go to Bandsaw Pro, which is under the Multiply and then the Subdivide menu. The other thing which I have a tendency to use a lot, I'm going to actually not select it this way, is um, I originally started with using wings and then silo where I do a lot of my subdivision modeling as well um, and they have very powerful mouse selection menus um, so I've tried to you know change lightwave menus a lot to kind of replicate that and I've added menus to the shift control mouse button menus so if I hold my shift control button down if I left left mouse click I have a lot of the tools that I use on a regular basis and Bandsaw Pro is in there. So that's just a very quick easy way for me to select it wherever I'm wherever my mouse is. So I'm just going to go to Bandsaw Pro and I'm going to kind of reset this so you see what it looks like if you're starting from scratch. So uh, the first thing that it does is it, it will put a new edge loop right down the middle which is not really exactly where we want it in this case so I'm going to just slide this down and how close you want to get it will depend on how sharp you want this edge so I'm gonna keep it pretty close maybe we'll make this two percent and the nice thing about Bandsaw Pro is I'm gonna want that same two percent on the other side so right now this is fairly close to the edge here I want it to be the same on the other side so I'm just gonna click the mirror button uh, the other thing which you may have noticed is I almost always leave the numeric panel open. Um, many of the operations in Lightwave give you um, a lot more options if you have the numeric palette open. So I have a tendency just to leave it open all the time. But I'm going to click the mirror button and the first thing you'll see is that we have two new control loops or two new loops going around this object. But the nice thing is they're both exactly the same distance. So I'm going to I'm going to accept that. I'm going to deselect uh all my uh geometry and you can see there it two nice very clean control loops same exact distance. I'm going to do the same thing with with the other side going the other direction now. Again, you only have to select two polygons. I'm going to go back to Bandsaw Pro. And uh of course it remembers my last settings. Now because this was a uh a flattened cube the dimensions of this side were exactly the same as the other side so the setting could stay exactly the same so I actually don't have to do anything I'm just gonna accept that I'm gonna deselect and if, if we go into the top view and we zoom all the way into that corner you could see that this is a perfect square at this point and in my mind that's probably as you know as good as you're gonna get it's not gonna get any more accurate than that and that uh, that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned now we still have to do it for uh, one more loop or one more ring of polys around the object. So I'm going to once again select two polygons. We want it to go around the object this way now. I'm going to go back to Bandsaw Pro. And we could see now in this time, in this case, the same 2% is much, much smaller because the dimension in this, in this direction and in the, the y-axis is much smaller this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to delete one of the one of the control loops, one of the cuts, and I'm going to adjust the remaining one so it looks as close to a square as possible. So I'm I'm going to go into the the back view and I'm going to zoom in, and you can see right now it looks a little bit more like a rectangle. And I'm going to adjust, I'm going to adjust the percentage right now until it becomes pretty close to a square and that looks pretty good so instead of two percent we had to move this up to about eight point five percent at this point I'm gonna hit the mirror the mirror button and we're gonna get the same edge cut in the top I'm going to accept that and you can see pretty quickly that we have cuts all the way around this cube 
that are all very, very close. That should all be almost perfect squares all the way around if you look in the corners. And now if we hit the tab key to turn on sub patch modeling again, this should be a fairly even, I'll go into the full full screen view, a nice evenly rounded corners and everything should be pretty accurate. So in, in the next video I'm going to continue on this one, I'm going to show you an easy way to cut a very accurate hole right through this um, and it will we'll keep it very very close to a circle so uh, stay tuned for the next video.